Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about converting between name and formula and formula and name of ionic compounds. In order to do this, we need to first discuss what are ionic compounds. So let's start with that. An ionic compound is a compound which is held together by an ionic bond. Now, ionic compounds as a whole are, have no charge, but they're comprised of an anion and a cation. Now, cations are positively charged. A couple of ways of remembering this. First of all, the T in cation it looks like a plus sign. But the second one that I really like is that cations have cat in it. And cats are always very positive. They're positive. See, cation positive. It's funny, and you'll remember it now, and you'll never be able to not do positive. Anyways, anions are a negative ion. So again, cations are positively charged ions. Anions are negatively charged ions. Now in unit zero, we discussed that metals are cations because metals tend to lose their electrons, and nonmetals tend to be anions because they tend to gain electrons. Now in addition to individual elements being the cation or anion in an ionic compound, we can also have polyatomic ions as a component of these compounds. Now polyatomic ions, as the name suggests, are ions that are comprised of multiple atoms. If you're interested in a Quizlet to learn these polyatomic ions, there's going to be one linked in the description of this video. All right, so the first thing I want to discuss is what is the difference between a binary and a ternary ionic compound. So my example of a binary ionic compound is magnesium oxide, MgO. It's binary because it has only two different types of atoms or two different elements in the compound. A ternary would be an example of sodium uh, nitrate here, which is going to have sodium, but then nitrate, which is a polyatomic ion. So it's ternary because of the fact that we have more than simply two elements in the compound. So how are we going to name these compounds? Now we talked about this being a binary compound, and with binary compounds, it's fairly straightforward. In order to go from formula to name of a binary compound, what you're going to do is simply write the name of the cation first. The cation in this case is magnesium. So we're going to write magnesium first. Now, magnesium being the cation, we're just going to follow it with the anion, but it's not as simple as writing oxygen. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to drop the suffix of oxygen and we're going to replace it with ide, I-D-E. So let me show you how this is done. Essentially, where we take the Y-G-E-N and replace it with ide, I-D-E. Therefore, the name of MgO is magnesium oxide. For a ternary ionic compound, what we're going to do is again just simply write the name of our cation, in this case sodium, And this is where it gets very simple, because this is a polyatomic ion, which you should know at this point hopefully is nitrate. Nitrate is simply going to be written as is. So therefore, the name of this ternary polyatomic compound is sodium nitrate. Next, we're going to look at going from name back to formula. All right, so now let's practice going from name back to formula, again for these ions. We're going to start with our cation. Remember, when we went from formula to name, we started simply by writing the name of the cation. Therefore, calcium is simply the name of the cation. So what we're going to do is write our cation, and we're going to start by writing the charge as well. Remember back to unit zero, we discussed the common charges of these ions. Because calcium is the alkali earth metal group, we are dealing with a 2 plus charge on the ionic form. For the second component, the anion, remember if it ends in IDE, then you're simply looking at the elemental form. This means we're looking at the elemental form of chlorine. Chlorine, because it's a halogen, has a charge of negative 1, therefore we're going to write that now. Now the reason we did this is because remember, Ionic compounds are made of ions, however, 
when put together, the total charge is zero. What that means is we need to somehow have a two plus charge and this negative one charge balance. And the way we do that is with subscripts. So with calcium chloride, what we're going to need to do is what we call the crisscross method. And let me show you how that works. We take the charge and we throw it across as a subscript on the other ion. So what we end up with as a result is CaCl2. So this CaCl2 we call calcium chloride. Let's do the next one, potassium sulfate. Now immediately you should recognize that sulfate is one of our polyatomic ions. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Potassium, because it's an alkali metal, is plus one charge. So we're going to write the potassium and the sulfate with their charges initially. Let's start with that. Again, we can use the crisscross method to determine the overall formula for this compound, where the plus one comes down here and the minus two comes down here as subscripts. So what we end up with as a result is K2SO4. This compound represents potassium sulfate. Next, I'm going to show you a couple of unique cases where we have multiple polyatomic ions, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So now let's look at a couple of special cases, which are a little different than what we've talked about before. Now, one thing that's important to note is that with ionic compounds, they're always going to be in their most reduced form. All right? The first one we want to look at is calcium nitrate. Now, calcium nitrate, again, we start by writing the, the actual element symbol of calcium, Ca. And because it's an alkali earth metal, it's got a 2 plus charge. Nitrate, NO3, has a minus 1 charge. Now, in this case, when we do the crisscross method, something interesting happens. We end up with one calcium, but two nitrate ions. It's not that we're actually doubling the number of atoms, we're simply doubling the number of ions. So what we're going to do, and let me show you, is we're actually going to put a parenthesis around the nitrate ion and put a subscript 2 outside of those parentheses. So it's going to look something like this. So this is the correct formula for calcium nitrate. Again, this tells us that, in fact, we have two polyatomic ions of the nitrate variety. So in other words, we have two nitrate ions for every one calcium. All right? Let's show you why we need to make sure that we're in our most reduced form using barium carbonate as our example. Barium, Ba, has a 2 plus charge. And carbonate, CO3, 2 minus, is a 2 minus charge or a minus 2 charge. Now the crisscross method would tell us that it's Ba2, CO3, 2. However, for ionic compounds, they're always in their most reduced form, which means that we simply have BaCO3 as our formula for this ionic compound. So here are some special cases in terms of your polyatomic ion, in terms of the name to formula. Now let's talk about the special cases of transition metals. Now transition metals, if you remember from unit zero, are those metals that are found within the D sublevel of the periodic table. The interesting thing about these is they can actually have variable oxidation states or variable charges in their ionic forms. Here I have iron chloride, and here I have iron chloride, but they're different. If you actually are going to write out the name of these two compounds, we have to account for the fact that the iron has two different charges in each. So the way we are going to do this is we're going to say iron chloride, but in Roman numerals we're going to put the charge. Chlorine, each one, has a negative one charge, which means that this iron must have a positive two charge. So when we write the name of this compound, we would call it iron parentheses, Roman numeral two, chloride. Whereas for the second compound, iron chloride, 
Here, because each chlorine still has a charge of negative 1, the iron must have a charge of plus 3. So we're going to do the exact same thing, except the Roman numeral will now suggest that we have, or show, that we have a plus 3 charge on that iron. Now, this is the case with most transition metals, where there are variable oxidation states, because of the interaction between the S and the D sublevels. However, to be aware, there are some that only have a single oxidation state. For example, zinc is always going to be plus 2. Silver is always going to be plus 1. So you're going to want to look at those exceptions to the rule in the link down below. So now what I want you guys to do is do a couple of practice problems. I gave you a couple of practice problems of formula to name and a couple with name to formula. Give these a shot. Pause the video. When you're ready, unpause it, and I'll explain the answers. All right. So the first one, we have aluminum and we have iodine. This is a binary compound, which means it's going to end in ide, I-D-E. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply replace the end of iodine with ide, and it becomes aluminum iodide. Now, for the second compound, calcium, now this is a polyatomic ion, dichromate. So we are dealing with calcium dichromate. In terms of name to formula, barium chlorate. So with barium, we are going to start with barium 2 plus and chlorate ClO4 has a charge of minus 1. Therefore, this becomes barium chlorate, BaClO4, 2, and remember with the parentheses, barium chlorate. Strontium phosphate, strontium SR, phosphite PO3, strontium has a charge of plus 2, whereas phosphite has a charge of minus 3. Crisscross method tells us that we are going to have SR3, PO4, sorry, PO3, 2. Again, make sure you include the parentheses around any polyatomic ions when there are going to be multiple. If you have any questions on any of these, all right, take a look back at the beginning of the video to see how I explained each of these processes in the first place. All right, so that wraps up this video. Let's do a quick recap. Today we learned about how to name and then write the formulas for ionic compounds, both the binary form, which involves simply a metal and a nonmetal, but also the polyatomic ternary forms that involve polyatomic ions. I'd like to thank Hannah Shaby, Bridget Rodick, and Jess Mutzi for writing the script, filming, and editing this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.